Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Fine. So let us begin and since we have not met uh, for some time, let us do a little bit of recap today before we begin. We want to talk about matrix representation of symmetry point groups eventually, but before that let us remind ourselves what we have done. So that is the homework. Now, what have we seen so far? We have talked about determination of symmetry point groups using the symmetry operations that are there in a molecule and this is the flow chart that we have discussed, right. And we discussed that this is a flow chart that nobody needs, is not it? Just by looking at the molecules you can figure out. The only thing you have to remember really is this C n and S 2 n that is what you should not forget, but it is a little funny. So, to start with we have discussed many examples starting with water, okay. Some of the more notable examples are ferrocene in eclipse form and we figured that it is D 5 H. Then ferrocene in staggered form we decided it is D 5 D, right. We talked about uh, T D group, tetrahedral group for a, uh, quite some time and one thing to remember is this, if you have say uh, C H 3 C L, what shape is it? C H 3 C L? Not anymore, not when you are enrolled in this course. If it is CH4, then it is tetrahedral TD, right. As long as you are in this course, CH3CL would mean C3P, okay. So, please do not say that CH3CL is tetrahedral. The bonds are disposed tetrahedrally, fine, but then the molecule is not a tetrahedron. It is a C3V molecule, right, okay. And then we talked about my favorite molecule that is allene, and we all, it is D2D. I hope everybody remembers allene is D2D. And then we talked about substituted allene as well. If you substitute this hydrogen and that hydrogen by two chlorine atoms, then it does not become a C1 molecule, rather it becomes a C2 molecule, right. So, there is allene and substituted allene for you, okay. For those who came late, tomorrow we are going to have the class at 6 o'clock. Uh, when is your quiz? Huh? Oh, then can you have the class at 5.30? 5 30 to 6 30. We will have a truncated class for to do, we will make up for it on Friday maybe or we will make up for it by 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in subsequent classes or I will just give more homework. And then we talked about the octahedron and this tetrahedron, octahedron, these are uh, shapes in which there are more than one principal axis of symmetry. That is what makes them special and that is what makes them what are called platonic solids. And we also talked a little bit about group subgroup relationships. We are going to come back to this later on and we are going to use this big time. And so far we are using the term group very loosely, but as you know group has a particular meaning, okay. We are going to use the proper meaning of group as well and then we will see how this group and subgroup uh, become more helpful to us than what it seems to be here. But what we said is that you start with a tetrahedron and you go on performing substitutions. On one hand you can get from OH you can get D4H and then C4V and then C2V, which means that D4H is a subgroup of OH, C4V is a subgroup of D4H as well as OH, C2V is a subgroup of C4V, D4H as well as OH. And on the other hand, C3V is a different line of the family, right. It is a half brother or half sister. It is a subgroup of OH, all right but it has nothing to do with D4H or C4V or C2V. And later on when we talk about the symmetry operations behaving as groups and when we talk about character tables and all, then we will see how this actually becomes important and how we can simplify problems by using this group subgroup relationship. But that is a story for uh, uh, another day in future, okay. And then we had just started talking about the matrix representation of symmetry operations, right. I think what we did is we used x, y, z as the basis. Can you close the door please? 
and we had just start, started talking about how you can represent the different symmetry operations as matrices. And why do we suddenly feel this urge to uh, convert uh, symmetry uh, to represent symmetry operations as matrices? Because as we said, we want to translate this into the language of algebra if this problem is to be simplified any further than this. And the way we translate is by using matrices. Okay. So, first we started with the easiest one for x, y, z, what is the identity matrix? There is an identity operation we said. So, the identity matrix is your unit 3 by 3 matrix. Everybody knows what it is, right? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. You multiply x, y, z by it, you get x, y, z. It is very simple. Then, We have talked about reflection, right? Reflection in which plane? X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X. We had discussed three cases, and here we have represented X, Y. What will happen when we reflect with respect to X, Y plane? X and Y coordinates will remain unchanged, and Z will simply change sign. So once again, you have a diagonal matrix, right? All non-diagonal elements are zero, and this three three element is minus one because Z changes sign upon reflection on x, y. Okay, easy. And similarly, you can figure out what are the matrices for y, z and z, x. What will it be for z, x? 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, right. Now, next, I think we finished with rotation and we had talked about rotation by an angle theta and the way I have drawn it here, it is anticlockwise, isn't it? This is x1, y1, this is x2, y2, right? Anticlockwise, and we said that the matrix that you get for that is cos theta minus sin theta 0, sin theta cos theta 0, 0, 0, 1, because x1 becomes x1 cos theta minus y1 sin theta, y1 becomes x1 sin theta plus y1 cos theta, and z1 remains z1. Okay, we are considering z1 to be the rotational axis anyway. Okay, so this is what we will uh, work out today. Just to bring in a little bit of variety, I have given you the answer here and we are going to work out the matrix for not clockwise rotation, but rather anti-clockwise rotation. It is easy okay. and it is from this book, Harrison Bartolucci. That is where it is worked out nicely, but I think you do not even need the book. It is quite simple. So, basically what we have to do is you start with this point x1, y1. Okay. And this is, uh, what vector is this? If I draw an arrow from origin to x1, y1, what is it called? Anything, any other name? Position vector, right? Position vector. Okay, I like that name better. Okay. Let us say the length is L. Okay. Can you read the L there? Huh? It is written in a little too stylized manner but I hope it is not too much of a problem. So, that length is L. Now, let us say I rotate it by an angle theta in clockwise direction. Will the length of the position vector change? No, it will still remain x, is not it? But let us say the new coordinates are x to y to. Okay? So, what is the relationship between x1, y1 and x2, y2? They are going to be related by your length L and the angle theta. Okay, that is what will help us write x2, y2 in terms of x1, y1. And the easiest thing, uh, the easiest way that one can uh, do this is by considering the x component and y component of the position vectors. It is as simple as that. Okay. If you want to do this, we will need one more angle. That is the angle between the position vector L, original one for x1, y1 and either x axis or y axis. So, let us say that the angle between the position vector L and x axis is alpha. Okay. What is this angle then? Theta minus alpha. Right. Now, let us go ahead and write down the x and y components. Let us start with this. This is L1 cos theta. We agree? Do we agree it is L1 cos theta? I do not agree. It is L1 cos alpha. Right alpha, right, not, not theta. So, 
I can make mistakes. Sometimes I can make mistakes to test whether you are awake. Sometimes I can make mistakes because I have made a mistake. You need to correct me in either case, right. So, L1 cos alpha and what is L, not L1 cos alpha, sorry, L cos alpha. There is no L1, L2, isn't it? L is same. So, L cos alpha, what is L cos alpha? It's x1, right? x1 and what is this one? L sin alpha, simple. And L sin alpha is what? The y component, y1, okay, simple. Now, if we uh, look at the transformed point x2, y2, then what happens? What is this? This is L cos theta minus alpha, do we agree? Plus or minus? L cos theta minus alpha plus or minus? Plus. plus. Okay. That is x2, x component. Right? If you have a doubt, please say and then we will go slower, no issue. Are we all convinced? That is the x, uh, x component, x2. And what will be the y component? This time it is minus, is not it? minus L sin theta minus alpha that is your y2, okay. Are we all good? All right. Now, what do we do? I do not want theta minus alpha, is not it? What I want to do is I want to write x2 in terms of x1, y1 and theta, right. Let us see if we can do that. To do that, let us recall that trigonometric relationship that we have uh, studied when we were little children studying in class 11. Yeah, some of us are little children even now, but what did we study in class 11? What is cos theta minus alpha? Cos theta cos alpha plus sin theta sin alpha, right. And what is sin theta minus alpha? sin theta cos alpha minus cos theta sin alpha, all right. So, we remember what we studied in childhood that is going to now uh, come very uh, turn out to be very useful, okay. Now, now let us uh, simplify this a little bit. What is your x2? x2 is L multiplied by cos theta minus alpha, okay. L cos theta minus alpha. So, what is that then? L cos theta cos alpha plus L sin theta sin alpha. What about y2? What is y2? y2 is minus L sin theta minus alpha. What is that? Minus L sin theta cos alpha plus L cos theta sin alpha. You are right. It is just that you uh, told me the second term first, but it does not really matter. It is a matter of choice. We can choose the second one to be first, no issue. Now, in the expression for x2, what is our goal? What are we trying to do? We are trying to express x2 in terms of x1 and y1. So, do you see x1? Where is x1? This, right? L cos alpha. Do you see y1? Where is y1? L sin theta, L sin alpha, L sin alpha that is y1 and you see x1 and y1 in the expression for y2 as well, okay. So, now what we have done is we have written x2 as x1 cos theta plus y1 sin theta, I have written y2 as minus x1 sin theta plus y1 cos theta, is that correct, right. And what about z1, z2, z2 equal to z1. All right. Is the contrast okay? Can you read when I put in the boxes? Or is it difficult? So, next time I should not use such dark blue. I can change it before I send it to you. No issue. Now, what do I want to do next? I want to write it in terms of matrices, okay? Something like this x2, y2, z2 equal to some matrix multiplied by x1, y1, z1. That is what I want to do. Okay. So, tell me now what will the matrix be? Very simple. 
cos theta sin theta 0 then cos theta 0 do not say it so fast my uh, computer poor computer is not able to catch up with your speed then 0 0 1 okay so that is the transformation matrix for rotation by theta with respect to z axis in clockwise direction okay so similarly anti clockwise is something that you can work out work out in a similar manner there is no difference really so now see it is block factorizable i can divide into two blocks now dividing into blocks means i want to draw these lines in such a way that i leave all the zeros out okay that is why i have drawn a line like this and a vertical line like this so that i have one block that is 2 by 2 and i have one block that is 1 by 1 1 by 1 of course means only one number right and then all the zeros which nobody needs they are left outside the block okay so i can block factorize this matrix into a 2 by 2 and a 1 by 1 block okay before going further i'd like to draw your attention to something so last day and today we have written down two matrices both for rotation by some angle theta one in clockwise direction one in anti clockwise direction okay and these are the matrices this is what I think I had written the previous day, right? For C n minus, minus means anti clockwise, and this is what you worked out right now, C n plus. Okay. So, what is the similarity or difference between them? First is that it is both are block factorizable into 2 into 2 by 2 and 1 by 1 block. Okay. And the 1 by 1 block or the number that is just 1 because z does not change sign okay it why is this 2 by 2 because by operation of this uh, rotation by theta we are essentially mixing x and y when you mix two coordinates then you get non zero non diagonal elements that is point number 1 you get zero non diagonal elements when the coordinates don't mix with each other unsocial coordinates they keep to themselves they either remain what they were or at most they change sign then you get a situation like this okay but when you have non zero non diagonal elements what it means is that so let us think of this block as a 2 by 2 matrix this matrix works on what x1 y1 and gives you x2 y2 okay why is it that you have a sin theta here and minus sin theta here because you cannot write x2 only in terms of x1 you also need y1 isn't it there is a mixing of coordinates okay Dala? fine so that is point number one non zero non diagonal element will come when there is a mixing of coordinates and point number two is if you look at these uh, two by two blocks what is the similarity what, what is the difference the difference is the position of the sign well, position of the minus sign is not it is, yes yes they are transposed but what is same is the character 2 cos theta here also it is 2 cos theta so it does not matter if i rotate in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction the character remains the same because what is the character telling you what is the information that character gives you character is a trace sorry trace this uh, sum over i a i i okay so in this case it is cos theta plus cos theta in this case also it is cos theta plus cos theta the diagonal just sum the uh, diagonal elements that is your character right so character does not change right it is 2 cos theta in both the cases so the point i am trying to make is that when you have operations of the same class then they have the same character C n plus and C n minus belong to the same class. He is just rotating this way or the other, right? Same axis. They belong to the same class. See, they have same characters. This is a point that we'll come back to later on once again when we have a little more insight about character tables. So uh, the other point, of course, that comes out is that 
characters can tell us a story. Okay, and characters being invariant, perhaps that is why they are called characters. Fine. Now, so we have you have already learned how to write down what are called uh, the matrix notation for uh, symmetry operations. Okay. Now we are going to use these matrices to generate what are called representations of symmetry point group. And when we generate representations, what we essentially do is that we look at all the matrices together. Okay. So, what a re representation does is that it tells us about the property of a symmetry point group or it tells us uh, about a property of certain species in this symmetry point group which undergo a set of changes, a specified set of changes upon all symmetry operations. Right? So, let us see what that means and let us work with the simplest point group that we have well maybe not simplest, but a very, very familiar point group that we have dealt with C 2 V. What is the example of C 2 V that we discussed? Water to start with. What about C H 2 C L 2? That is also C 2 V is not it? So, many other. So, let us talk about C 2 V and what we will do is these are the symmetry operations of C 2 V by now we know this E C 2 and we consider the z axis to be the C 2 axis as usual. Z axis is always designated not always most of the time designated as the principal axis of symmetry. Sigma v will be then z x and y z right. The sigma v's have to contain the principal axis. The sigma v is denoted as z x, sigma v dashed is denoted as y z ok. We will take this and we are going to use x y z as basis. What is the meaning of basis? I will uh, perhaps go with a more uh, general de definition. A basis is a collection of elements and of course, by elements I do not mean nickel cadmium and all that. Huh? Basis is a collection of let us say functions on which the uh, operators operate. Okay. It sounds a kind of silly, but it is general, is not it? So, this is the set of functions on which our I am going to make the uh, transformation matrices operate and then see what happens. Okay. Fine. So, for this basis, let us construct the symmetry operations. What will be the matrix for E? Very simple 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, because this is identity, identity has to be unit matrix, no issue. What about C to Z? What happens when I apply C to Z? What happens to x? x coordinate? x becomes minus x, you agree with that? x becomes minus x. What about y? y becomes minus y. What about z? z remains invariant. Okay. So, what will the matrix be? Minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So, see rotation by 180 degrees is a special case of rotation by theta. What we said? immediately before this is that when you rotate by an angle theta, then you have a mixing of x and y, but not if you rotate by 180 degrees, because you rotate it in such a way that x has become minus x. So, once again we have unsocial coordinates that do not talk to, do not mix with each other. That is why once again we have nice diagonalized matrices. There is no non-zero non-diagonal element here, right, because rotation by 180 degrees is such that you take a vector and you just make it negative. It does not mix with the other one. Okay. So, once again unlike what we had written earlier, we do not get non-zero non-diagonal elements. There is no mixing. Okay. So, far so good. If there is a question please ask. Please feel free to ask questions that you might think are not so intelligent questions also. Sometimes those are the better questions. Fine. Moving on, sigma z x, z and x are on uh, the plane, so they are not going to change sign. What about y? Y becomes minus y. What is the matrix? 1 0 0, 0 minus 1 0, 0 0 1. All right. 
once again no mixing why because you are taking zx now think for a minute what would happen if instead of zx we had to take a plane that is halfway between x and y axis goes to z right but doesn't go to one of the axis this is a z axis not a very good example of z axis this is z axis so we are saying this is zx right this is zy what if the plane was somewhere say at 45 degrees between your uh, x and y planes what would happen then then x and y would interchange right so that's a uh, the other end of the spectrum not only mixing complete transformation x becomes y y becomes x what would the matrix be in that case 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 so what would be the so now again you are back to your uh, blocks of 2 is to uh, 2 by 2 and 1 by 1 in that case also right 0 1 1 0 so in this block what has happened is that the diagonal elements are 0 non diagonal elements are 1 1 so if I want to work out the character what will be the character 0 so this non diagonal elements do not contribute to character is not it so character becomes 0 in that case but once again it is an uh, kind of an extreme case of mixing where the original coordinate does not have any co any contribution in the transform coordinate at all ok fine then sigma v dash y z this is very easy now y and z will not change sign x will change sign so what will it be minus 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 right so what I am saying is that these four matrices form a matrix representation of the point, symmetry point group C to V ok but that is only the beginning not the end because if you look closer you can conveniently break up the matrix into three one by one blocks isn't it because see all these of diagonal elements are 0 is not it so they contribute do not contribute to anything so what, what I might as well do is I might as well uh, do not write them write only the non zero elements ok all right write them a little nicely and then of course these brackets do not mean anything anymore right so what I can do is I get rid of the brackets now what do I have I have this 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 which is a representation for x 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 which is a representation for y 1 1 1 1 is a representation for z ok. So, we have three different representations for a, the three coordinates x y and z ok. What does this tell us you look at this what you say is that Oh, so how does x behave x remains invariant under e it changes sign under c2 it remains invariant under sigma v and it changes sign upon operation of sigma v dash so what does this tell you about it tells you about how x behaves with respect to all the symmetry operations in the point group c2v okay so this is a nice symmetry description of x right ok. So, what we have done essentially is that we, we have found out to which symmetry species x belongs to which symmetry species y belongs to which symmetry species z belongs we have defined the symmetry species all right. So, this is these are symmetry species for you ok representation or symmetry species. So, have we at least got a semblance of understanding what is the meaning of symmetry species right. What we see is that in this case in C2V x and y and z they belong to three different symmetry species ok. These are symmetry species or representations and these are irreducible representations because you have uh, just one one numbers right. 
one one y one matrices or what we say is that the dimensionality of each of these symmetry species is one. One dimensional irreducible representation, one dimensional representation, so therefore irreducible. The dimensionality cannot be less than half, right? You cannot have half the number. You remember that riddle? It takes eight days for four men to dig a hole. How many days does it take for eight men to dig a hole? No, actually, it should be half. So, how many days does it take for two men to dig a hole? There is nothing like a half hole, right? Or uh, sorry, it, it is, I worded it wrongly. How many holes would uh, these two men dig in one day? The answer is still one. You do not have half a hole. Similarly, here also you cannot have half dimensionality, half is just does not make any sense. So, one is the minimum number. So, it cannot be reduced any further. That is why they are called irreducible representations. Irreducible representations are also called symmetry species because they tell you how uh, certain functions behave when subjected to each and every symmetry operation in the point group. Okay? Understood? So, that is what it is. Now, what we can do is let us try and change the basis and see what we get. Working with one basis is not enough. You work with x, y, z and be happy, go home, end the course, give A to everybody, that is not such a good idea, right? Because what we are doing right now is like those proverbial 10 blind men trying to define an elephant. Somebody says elephant looks like a rope, somebody says elephant looks like a horse pipe, right? So, what we should do is we should see what happens when we change the basis. And let us change now to uh, maybe a basis that is more tangible to chemists than x, y and z.